morning and welcome to another edition of the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement featuring professional home inspector Jack Bielen who has told us and always uh, has a story that every house has a story and Jack I can't believe it. This is our last show of the year. Can you imagine? Well, didn't 2014 seem to fly by? I don't know where it went. It was, it's just incredible. And, and maybe that's one of those things, Barry, as we grow one year older every year, the time just seems to fly a little bit fast. I think that's what's happening. Yep, yep. You know, it, this year I sold, you know, or helped sell two homes in, in Florida. I helped uh, declutter three homes this year. I've got my mother's home for sale down in Ocean City now. Um, it's, it was extremely hectic, and, and business uh, has been very good for Tri-County, and I think generally in, in the home inspection profession, um, as I talked to multiple inspectors throughout the area. And, you know, about a week or so ago, I just read where, you know, uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae are bringing um, 3% money uh, to first-time buyers. Wow. Yeah, and, and I'm very excited with that news. And because there were some, 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 I don't know, not so good news, I would say, like August or September of 2014, where now they're taking into consideration student loans, you know, before, you know, th- these young people uh, can buy a home. And, and with the cost of education, which is way beyond uh, the old um, um, cost of living, uh, that just keeps going up, but colleges still ask for more, and they have billions of dollars in their nest egg. I- incredible. So these kids are being saddled with over $100,000 worth of student loans. Yep. And, and, folks, these are the, you know, the first-time buyer are the stone of which you have to throw into the pond to create ripples. Um, so I, I was very happy, you know, hearing that the government agencies are willing to step forward a little bit and, and give, you know, the young people a chance to establish themselves and, and begin their, their, to raise families. So um, I'm, I'm hoping for a really good spring this year. You so, and me both. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So, um, you know, last week, Barry, you talked about the shortest day of the year uh, has now come and gone. And come on, spring and summer. So there's one more holiday in front of us uh, with New Year's, and the rest are in the rear room here. So no wonder all those diet commercials are going to come on after the first of the year because with hibernation <laughs> and great food, I think we're all kind of stuffed like bears at this point. <laughs> so, you, uh, you, you, got, you got that right. Yeah. So today's show is the weather in your home. It's a constant battle. Well, before we kick in, of course, I want to thank my sponsors. And please let them know that you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show. Um, so uh, let, let's go into it. Burrow Exterminating out of Glenolden, Pennsylvania. What a wonderful company to deal with. They're at 610-586-5640. Um, if you plan to, f- to finish your basement and you're in their uh, area, marketing area, and that's Chester, Delaware counties, Philadelphia, uh, Montgomery County, you should check your house for radon. Um, because uh, at this time of year, with everything closed up, you're going to have a higher rate on reading than if it were in July with the windows open. So you may should really consider that. And, and there is 610-586-5640. Buxmont Inspections, the best uh, on, that deal with on-site sewage evaluation, testing, repair, and replacement. They're out of Sellersville, but they, like their name implies, uh, they're, they're, they service a wide swath of area. And their website is BuxmontInspections.com. Check them out. Pest Blaster. Uh, Their website is pestblaster.com. Simple and easy to remember. Again, they do radon testing too, but as as well as mold testing, wood destroying insect inspections, as well as pest removal. Brainflushgear.com. It doesn't get any easier than that. I spoke to Kevin uh, actually a few weeks ago, and he says business is booming, so God bless. Uh, and you can reach out to them at contact at brainflushgear.com as well if you want to send them a quick email. Tri-County Inspection Company, Barry, 2015, this is our 30th year 
uh, of being in business. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thought as, uh, as we move into this new year. Uh, we're at tcinspect.com. Check out our website. We do pre-listing inspections, of course, of buyer's inspections, uh, investment properties, commercial buildings. Um, and our, our service area is 15 counties, but we've also gone out of our service area to, to help our clients. So if you need us, reach out to us. Uh, South Jersey, 856-853-4224. The Lehigh Valley, 610-346-7880. And Bucks and Montgomery County areas, 215-295-2030. So um, any emails, I, I want you to please send them to me at, at the House Whisper Show at gmail.com. Podcasts are always available at WWDBAM, and of course, previous shows are always available on the HouseWhisperShow.com. So, as Barry mentioned, this is our last show of the year, and I'm going to forgo the email box. Um, but for 2015, we're going to dedicate another show to answer some of your questions. And finally, to let you know as I close out the year, this is my 131st show. So, I want to thank you all for listening. It's been, I, I love this stuff, I really enjoy putting <laughs> these together. And, and sharing what I, I know so that it helps you as a homeowner or, or, or potential homeowner. Uh, the weather in your home, uh, it, it's a constant battle. So I'm going to take you in the, to the Wayback Machine. And since the dawn of man, in order to survive the weather, he had to find shelter, uh, be it in a cave, be it in a tree, be it in a hole, or be it in the brush. Caves are easy because holes in the cliffs or mountains already had a natural door or window. Uh, and then this way you could peer out at the inclement weather. It was good for people who, you know, who could live in the mountains, but what about those, uh, those desert dwellers where trees are sparse except for that uh, oasis over there? Uh, trees, shrubs, branches made rickety shelters, uh, but they worked for that era. Mud huts uh, were, were kind of consistent by rivers, uh, but think of adobe, you know, uh, out there in, in the western part of the United States, the adobe dwellers, rocks, anything that can be used to create shelter. And, and most worked until you had that hard rain or that flood or those high winds and other Mother Nature events. As man got smarter and, and learned how to make tools and fire, basic shelter became more robust and a little bit more weatherproof. From splitting cedar into shingles or taking hay and threading wire or rope through them, most of the rain and snow stayed out. As the old saying goes, um, you know, th there's nothing better than a good roof over your head. And that little statement has really stood the test of time. So with roofing, if you think through the years, we've had slate, we've had wood, we've had thatch. I haven't used that word in a, in a while, bar Barry, thatch. Uh, That's right. <laughs> fiberglass, PVC. I mean, there are, are so many different choices today uh, to keep your head and your house dry. Uh, unfortunately, it's the roof that takes the brunt of Mother Nature's fury. High winds, hard rains, deep snows, blistering heat all take a toll on the roof surface and can short the life of the material used. And water in its smallest form, literally a drop, it can leave a stain in a ceiling or a wall. Constant drips can deteriorate the roof or the wall sheathing and introduce mold. The saturation in today's homes may call for what we call decladding and reconstruction of entire walls. So if your roof is approaching uh, 25 years in the burbs, 10 years in the cities, or that slate that used to be on your home is now in the garden, personally, I would recommend that you budget for replacement now. And believe it or not, folks, winter is an excellent time to replace the roof. And the reason why, people don't think about it. So your costs are down, your labor is down, and the availability of material is up. If you wait literally three months from now and we're starting to get into the rainy season, guess what? You're in line. So a couple of years ago when I replaced my roof, folks, I did it in January. I got my roofer on board. I got my materials. 
I got my dumpster. Everything could be, you know, ordered and delivered within a week rather than having to wait a few months. And, you know, it's kind of like having a, a hole in your shoe, okay? It's, it's a little bit too late, you know, to, to buy new shoes when you're walking down the road and your feet are wet. So when you start to see that those soles are wearing out, it's time to go ahead and order a new roof, too. So um, my, my last bit of advice, Barry, before we go to a commercial break, is make sure that you stay at one layer of material at all times on your roofing. Pennsylvania and New Jersey do allow two layers, but if you if you followed the news in Buffalo this past winter, roof systems were collapsing, and this is all due to weight. So stick to one layer of shingles and make sure that you don't add too much more. So before we go into the next one, um, Barry, why don't we take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to talk about windows and other openings. All right, I can hardly wait. This is a good chance for us to take a little breather and come right back with more of the House Whisperer show at WWDB right after this. Boro Exterminating has been specializing in wood destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years. Serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, all inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Boro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainFlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainFlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain Flush. Visit BrainFlushGear.com or email them at contact at BrainFlushGear.com. For your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucks Mont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucks Mont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-666. 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, 
transactions, call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. Jack Milne is back. It's the House Whisperers show every week at this time. And as we mentioned, uh, we are saying goodbye to the year. This is our last show of this year. And uh, Jack, uh, what are your plans for New Year's? I typically stay, you know, stay around the house. I, uh, and, and I think, you know, because a lot of people may be out celebrating, um, I know the police tend to be out, uh, you know, more regularly, you know, between Christmas and, 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 and New Year's. So, you know, I'm almost 60 now, Barry. You know, uh, to me, to watch the ball another time, eh, you know. But you know what I will be doing? I'll be shooting a lot of pool. There you go. Uh, we, there you go. Yeah, we put a pool table in our former living room years ago. Uh, so it's a, it's a, I'm going to have some friends over and, uh you know, watch the ball drop from the comfort of my own home. <laughs> uh, that, that, that just shows you the value of a home. Nice and warm and cozy. Can't beat it. You All can't right. beat it. Okay, well, let's uh, pick up where you left off. You've got a great subject, as always, and uh, I don't want to miss a minute. Okay, well, again, today's topic is the weather in your home. It's a constant battle, so let's talk outside. The next big weakness are, are your general openings. Uh, these are windows, they're the doors, foundation windows, or, or foundation cracks, as well as utility um, uh, points. So, you know, I, I, I've seen probably over a thousand panel boxes that are corroded inside as water travels down the service entry cable into the home and then into the electric panel. And as you all know, water and electricity don't go together well. And it's one of those things that people don't tend to take apart their, uh, their the faceplate of their electric panel because they're kind of afraid of it. And personally, I can't blame them. But it's amazing how corrosion can set in, not only at the bottom of the panel, but behind our breakers, which we call the bus, which could lead to shock and electrocution. And, of course, you know, we don't, we don't like that big E word. Um, so, you know, you, if, if, you, if you're seeing corrosion at the bottom of your panel, I would suggest you get an electrician in and take a good look. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that you open it yourself. Um, you may want to add window well covers uh, to prevent the wells from filling with water. Um, and also, the, the, they're one of the weakest windows because they're not made well, um, so it is easy for water to seep into the home. And, and I think, honestly, caulking is one of man's greatest discoveries and should be used to keep the building envelope tight. Um, so remember, water is the enemy. And so if you've got that caulk gun open, I tell my clients, think of like Clint Eastwood. You know, you got it open, what can I check? <laughs> and I want you to check around your gas line penetrations, your electrical penetrations, your phone and cable penetrations. Look at where your refrigerant line penetrates the house wall because that becomes a transient uh, point for, for mice. And it's amazing how many openings we have. Look at the gap between your siding and uh, your, your, your veneer, be it brick, be it stone, uh, be it wood clabbered. Uh, these are all areas where moisture can seep through. In today's homes, as I open windows during the course of an inspection, I look up and I look at the top sash and see if I see anything that we call coffee stains. These coffee stains are indication that water is actually wicking behind the, the veneer of which your house is clad. So it's one of those things that you, while that caulk gun is open, use it. Um, and go to clear. I love clear. Clear works on any surface. And buy a good tube of silicon caulk. It's going to should be 100%, and it's going to run you between 5 and 6 bucks. Will it last 50 years? I doubt it, but they like to they advertise that. But you know, as far as siding, beveled wood siding uh, has lasted hundreds of years, but needs to be scraped and painted to be durable. Um, 
um, brick in the old parts of Philadelphia are starting to show their age by what we call shaling or spalling, uh, cracking, and, and, they, and, and can collapse due to lack of pointing with a period-specific mortar. So if you live in the city and, and you're in a home that was built in the 17th, 18th, and early 1900s, uh, you can use Portland cement as mortar because it's not going to work with the older structures. And, 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 and what's ironic is that the material seals too well. Okay, you got me on that? It seals it too well. So what happens is um, moisture will end up deteriorating the brick more rapidly because it can't dissipate. So, uh, so the wrong pointing can deteriorate a wall faster than no pointing at all. Other sidings, of course, we're familiar with vinyl siding, aluminum siding, steel, as well as asbestos siding, uh, which actually used to be called cement tiles uh, in, the, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and then became all of a sudden this word asbestos siding uh, in the 70s. And these materials have really withstood the test of time. Asbestos siding, we do tell our clients to wear, a, um, you know, just even a dust mask if you're going to work with it, uh, because it, it does contain asbestos fibers, but at the same time, you don't want to breathe cement dust in either. And cement siding, 100% cement siding, uh, is now one of the newest claddings that I'm seeing on our on our most recent buildings. Stucco on masonry is a fabulous fabulous finish, but on frame, it's really unfortunately today's nightmare. So typically due to mechanical, I'd say lack of mechanical trust as far as the mechanic putting the material on correctly, by not reading the instructions, water's passing through like a river. Uh, and it's getting through the gaps and penetrations that I spoke about um, br uh, briefly earlier. And it's, and it's now soaking the, stu the studs, the plates, the, what we call the sheathing, be it oriented strand board or plywood, the insulation, the drywall, et cetera. Um, so it's really forcing homeowners at, at a minimum tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, to have the material removed and replaced and have it installed in the correct fashion. So many, many stucco homes are for sale right now and sitting because there may be a risk in buying a home, uh, unfortunately, with the stucco cladding. So if, if, if my listeners, please, if you're looking to sell a home with stucco, I would ask that you be proactive and have your house tested now before you put the sign up on, on the lawn because a prudent buyer as well as an astute home inspector will be recommending to that buyer to have the stucco tested. And there's this one community in Montgomery County where I've inspected the same home four times because the seller absolutely refuses to have the stucco tested. And I disclose that, of course, to my potential buyer, even though I've represented four buyers in that home. So, you know, I'd rather that you be proactive than reactive, have the documents uh, on your listing table and be ready, and, and, and let's get that house sold. Um, let's move on, what I call the soil. Soils, of course, are the dirt around our homes. So what happens when they get saturated or frozen with, with uh, rain and snow? If the grade around your home is flat or negative, water can rush in. Back in the 90s, and I think this is around 1996 or 97, Barry, we had this snowfall, we, then we had a thaw, and then we had a rain, and then it froze. Oh, yeah, and yeah, that was a big one. In a couple of days, foundations were buckling due to the heaving soils. Um, if you tend to live near rivers and creeks or other water um, uh, surfaces, even dry beds can overflow with the right, right amount of rain or snow uh, with a thaw. Um, living in Yardley since 1987, we had five 100-year floods in four years. So I'm not sure how they're doing the math, but to me, that's 500 years. And having floods in five of, the, you know, five of them in four years, um, the law of averages isn't keeping up. That's, now, a lot. that's a lot of floods. It's, it's incredible. So in our area, houses are being raised 10 to 12 feet off grade. You know, the electric meters are raised, the electric services, uh, telephone cables, air conditioning condensing units are mounted way up there. 
So if you're going to buy or build by water, uh, there are always some inherent risks involved. So I ask that you do your homework and, and keep those flood and homeowner insurance policies current. What if Mother Nature turns the power off? And I swear the utility grid right now is so fragile that after any storm, be it wind, rain, snow, the power is out somewhere in your county. The question becomes for how long? So what items in your home besides the lights can you live without for an extended period of time? And I tend to, to think of the people who are more in the rural areas who are always the last on the grid to get help and have homes with on-site sewage, a, a well, a heat pump, and a sump pump in the basement that needs to run in order to keep the water out. Even in the suburbs and part of our towns and cities, all are caught up in this web of what uh, I like to call the grid. And if you try to check with the local utility companies, either the calls go unanswered, they're busy, or if you actually get a human, they're guessing at what time the power may be restored. So uh, I would suggest that you think of a portable, portable generator or a whole house generator uh, that will help keep the lights on when all goes dark. And even if it's a portable generator, folks, uh, they go about uh, through five gallons in eight hours, uh, and you can keep your refrigerator on and some basic electric. Now, the whole house generators can run between eight to $12,000, uh, but I'll tell you what, the investment is well worth it when you need it the most. And, and generators today, I feel, are a lot like the homes in the 60s and 70s when central air conditioning uh, components uh, was really out of the, the reach uh, for, for most homeowners to afford. But with production and technology, prices have really come down to a point that most middle-income folks can afford um, an air conditioner in their home today uh, and, and even a generator, even if you have to make some payments. Before we jump into the new year, please, folks, have a happy, happy, happy time. Spend time with friends and family. Let's, let's uh, kick 2014 out and let's open 2015 with open arms. Well, we'll, we'll see you next year. <laughs> and do that again next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Mill. Now, to listen to previous programs or if you have any questions, visit the House Whisperer Show. Dot com. Happy New Year, everybody, and Happy New Year, Jack. Thank you, sir. You as well, Barry.